It probably goes without saying that Dolphin is one of the most intuitive and reliable emulators there is right now. Not too surprising as this emulator has had 20 years of active development literally about as old as the GameCube itself. Of course, in its earlier years, Dolphin was nothing more than a minor curiosity, but once they got to version 4.0, then Dolphin really became a comparable alternative to playing on original hardware. By the time they got to version 5.0, then it became so much more stable, compatible, and accurate that I finally felt comfortable calling it a console replacer. Honestly, if you don't have a GameCube or Wii and have a beefy enough PC, then I'd be inclined to recommend getting Dolphin opposed to snagging original units, mainly because games for both GameCube and Wii have been slowly creeping up in price in the past several years. There was, however, one very small, completely minor, borderline inconsequential nitpick I had with Dolphin prior, and that's how soft the native resolution output looks once upscaled. Typically for emulated retro games, my top visual preferences are CRT mask emulation for a softer look and razor sharp pixels. Native res on Dolphin has a more bilinear look to it, which isn't to my taste personally. Now for 480 resolution content like the GameCube and Wii, then it honestly doesn't really bother me that much. It's why I'm perfectly happy playing on my Wii U because the convenience of using that console for me outweighs any pixel preference I may have. Now I know what you're thinking, dude, just increase the internal res and play in 4K or whatever. And hey, that's a fair point. In these applications, I'd rather play in higher res because it does look noticeably cleaner. However, in most instances, I'd rather play in native res for older 3D games, which would include GameCube, Xbox, PS2, and even the Wii. Sometimes it's because I feel when the res is boosted, it only makes the other assets like polygons and textures look less flattering, especially with how juxtaposed the lower res textures look against the higher res models. Other times, I simply want to achieve an OG-like experience by displaying games at their original resolution, especially if I'd like to save on performance when using the emulator. In that aspect, Dolphin is just fine, but eh, the, them pixels still look a little too soft to me. It's why if I want better visual quality, I still have my GameCube, which is connected via component to a professional scaler like the RetroTank 5X which perfectly upscales games to achieve clean, sharp pixels. If I want an even sharper image, I can boot the GameCube in Swiss and set the horizontal scale to 1-1, as various GameCube games have a proprietary softening filter that this setting overrides. You can see how much cleaner it makes various assets like the HUD textures look. But admittedly, it's kind of a pain in the ass to go through all that every single time. Well, luckily for me, Dolphin has been recently updated to finally have a dedicated resampler which, for lack of a better term, provides a sharp pixel output when displaying at native res. And it looks so good. Most would probably still prefer just rendering at higher resolution, but I don't know, for me, playing these older games, I'd rather save the higher res for some kind of remaster which can benefit from updated textures. Of course, it's all a matter of taste, and all this new update does is provide another option for people like me who can be a little picky with game video output. I think it works especially well for other emulator enhancements like better frame rates. In the case of Mario Sunshine, playing at 60 FPS with 4K resolution and widescreen looks really cool and feels really good, don't get me wrong, but I still can't help but think it looks a little uncanny, enough for it to be a, a tad distracting. With native res looking much cleaner thanks to the resampler, I can see this as an official Sunshine release that never happened where the game had 60 FPS and native widescreen on original hardware, which was already possible on Dolphin before, I understand, but damn, I love my razor sharp pixels. It doesn't stop there, as you can still mess around with the anti-aliasing and other graphical settings to dial in your preferred setup. I'd say just set the resampler to area, and I actually like having the anti-aliasing off for super chunky sharp pixels. For me, personally, it's another appreciated addition that makes Dolphin a potentially better way to play GameCube and Wii games compared to playing on original hardware or even on Wii U. I regret to say I still occasionally run into various bugs in the middle of play, like stuttering or audio glitches, but nothing that would make a game unplayable. Not gonna lie, because I still have original hardware methods and GCN games on my Wii U, those will still be how I play GameCube games going forward. Dolphin for me is fun to tinker with, and if it's your only option, then it's a damn fine option. 
but I'm glad that with the resampler update, I'll have the perfect way to play Dolphin that really suits me in terms of visual output. For the remainder of this video, all the footage will be in Dolphin's native resolution mode with area resampling and no other graphical enhancements. And with this new update, Dolphin remains as the best emulator I've ever used. I don't typically use emulators to be honest, mainly because I've meticulously crafted my gaming setup to be as convenient and quick access as possible for either CRT or HDTV play. It's not a setup that would work for everyone, don't get me wrong, but it's been a more convenient way to play retro games for me personally. With that said however, I have had some fun trying out other emulators like BSNES and DuckStation. Dolphin though has been and continues to be the best emulator in my honest opinion. The fact that it's essentially a two package deal of playing the GameCube's library and the Wii's library is still mind blowing to me. Controls are especially important, so it's great that native controllers are effortlessly supported. All you need is a GameCube USB adapter, preferably one of the official ones by Nintendo, and syncing a Wii remote to Dolphin is shockingly as easy as syncing it to a console. It's funny how regarding the sensor bar, all the Wiimote needs is a couple of infrared lights in order to work. You can set up some candles and it would work. I tried that Mayflash wireless adapter, which wireless my ass, that shit and thing still needs to be plugged in. But even after that, it hardly worked. For a while, I would simply turn on my Wii and use its sensor bar for emulating on Dolphin. But too many times I'd forget to turn the Wii off after playing. Regardless, when you're in the game, it's just like playing on real hardware, which for me is the point of it all. I'm going to be honest, if I'm using an emulator, then I'd like to recreate as much of the original experience as possible with the barest of emulation related enhancements. It's the main reason why this resampler update is such a big deal to me. That's not to shun or discourage emulation related enhancements, but I prefer to save those kinds of things for official re-releases like remasters or remakes or retro compilations. Dolphin is a jack of all trades and a master at all by catering to every play preference. You can be a minimalist and keep the experience as vanilla as possible or jack up all the enhancements and create your own remasters. Not to mention the usual emulator shebang like save states, cheats, hacks, controller options, video options, etc. If I still had a small nitpick, it's that it feels like every game requires some specific config setup in order to work properly. Before booting the game, I'm always inclined to check the wiki to see if I need some specific setting enabled or disabled because I want any quirk to be purely because of the game and not from a hick within Dolphin. The lack of setting profiles for specific games can make this little step a, a, a tad tedious. Though I suppose most people would recommend leaving every option in its default setting and only making changes if you encounter bugs. In the total spirit of fairness, I've left most settings as default in all of this footage and haven't run into anything noteworthy. Only an occasional harmless stutter and this weird ass shit in Metroid Prime Trilogy. For the most part, I was able to completely forget the fact that I was playing on an emulator, which I stress for me personally is the name of the game. Even if Dolphin could only play GameCube and Wii games, I'd still be viewing it as the best or at least my favorite emulator. But the fact that you can also play the Wii's vast library of Weaveware and virtual console games especially kicks ass. I mean, I don't want to oversell it much. Uh, after all, this is the Wii's virtual console, which isn't exactly the best emulation there is, don't get me wrong. But the fact that you can use an emulator within an emulator and have it play perfectly well from what I tested is nothing short of astonishing. Through one emulator, you can play through the entirety of a franchise's beginnings, all through Dolphin, which I believe is quite beautiful to be honest. The footage here is still with native res settings, but this may be a time to jack up the internal res because it does give Virtual Console games an ultra crisp look, which is really nice. There's a lot of talk regarding video game preservation, and it's hard to pinpoint a perfect solution. Video games are especially challenging from the interactive nature of them, and the hard truth is that some, if not many games, may become lost media, or at least extremely challenging to experience media. It's in that aspect where I have all the respect for emulators. I often have intrusive thoughts on what I would do if I were to lose my humble little console collection and games, by whatever means. But thanks to the reliability of emulators like Dolphin, I can rest easy that no matter what, I'll have access to play my favorite games. I may prefer original hardware, but that's just my silly preference. Ultimately, when it comes to games, I think about a wise quote as to what the most important aspect of any game is. Well, being able to fucking play it. So when it comes to game preservation, so as long as these emulators exist, then I think we can rest easy that they'll last for the long term. 
I've been seeing in real time the battle between real hardware and emulators. I can vouch that above all else, there is still something that hits different when you play on original hardware. There's a no holds barred, no frills, no filters appeal when playing on OG hardware to play a game on its home turf. It's why console modding is such a big thing now, to boost the original hardware to make it even better than it's ever been. I've had my retro consoles modded and served. My NES was modded for RGB output, so along with a good scaler like the RetroTank 5X, I can get crazy sharp, pixel perfect output from the original hardware. Even though I typically prefer playing on a CRT, I like to have sharp pixels for extremely clean footage for the sake of content. One mod I've been hoping to have installed at some point is the AVE HDMI kit for Wii, as it's relatively inexpensive and it would be a two for one to get mind-blowingly sharp pixels from both Wii and GameCube games. But I'll admit, now I'm not so sure it would be worth the hassle anymore, thanks to the resampler setting in Dolphin, essentially providing that for me now. Then again, I'd preach that pristine video output isn't as important as some other obsessed creators may feel. Sure, if it interests you and you have the means, have at it. After all the testing I've done and how impressed and excited I was for Dolphin's pixel perfect output, playing Wii and GameCube games on my Wii U remains my personal favorite way to go back to them. It's how I humble myself into not caring how clean the image looks, as long as it's not completely garbage, which some believe, but I could never agree with it. I guess I'm lucky to not have a trained eyeball to see it, but... Shit, man, it doesn't matter to me anymore once I'm just playing the damn game. Out of all the tests I've done, I shit you not, the Wii U test oddly felt the most comfortable. Something about not having any control over how the video looks liberated my picky tastes and allowed me to simply enjoy the damn game. Of course, with Dolphin, I can just easily not care, but the occasional stutter and odd bug is enough for me to prefer other outlets. The stability of Wii U, or just original hardware, goes a very long way for me. The Wii U is so damn convenient, and I swear load times for GameCube and Wii games are much faster, at least compared to original hardware. I still love Dolphin, and I'd have no hesitation using it if it's my only option, because it's a damn fine option. Ultimately, use whatever means you can to play whatever game you want. There is no objective right or wrong answer to how you should play your games. If you want to play some GCN or Wii games, get yourself Dolphin if you haven't already. I know if I ever go back to it, I'm going to be using the resampler for crispy pixels. Only because I have the option now, and I'm very happy with it. I want to express my appreciation to those who've watched up to this point. I hope that no matter what, you'll be able to play whatever game you want. And if that means going through Dolphin, then know that you're in good hands. I'm currently debating on what I'll do next, so it may be a while before the next video. That should do it for me today. So all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching.